Do you feel like as a member of the LGBTQ community, Ooh. transgenderism, <laughs> would you would you drop the T from the acronym? That's what I want to ask. Like, do you think as a gender identity, it should be included in the same community group as sexual orientation? Um, okay, so I... Uh, uh, I'm probably gonna, I, I don't know, I'm probably gonna get in hot water for saying this, but like I, I have always been, I'd say, an advocate for what I consider to be legitimate transgender people. People with gender dysphoria who actually trans transition from male to female, female to male. Um, and I have absolutely, my personal policy is I have no trouble using the pronouns of some, if a male becomes a female, a female becomes a male, I, I'll do she, I'll do him, I don't care. I just, I have a problem with the spectrum. I will not do they them pronouns. I won't do it. I don't. I will not accept non binaryism as a, a legitimate thing. I will not ex uh, accept quin gender queer gender fluid as a legitimate thing. I just want. I, I believe it's a um, uh, you know an identity uh, that somebody might just feel like you know that's. But it it's not a real thing, and I'm not going to participate mm -hmm. in it. It's become harder and harder for me to defend the transgender community as the transgender community has become more and more absurd and caricaturish and insane and what have you. Like a couple of years ago, there were other gay conservatives that we were kind of debating and they were saying like, we really want to drop the T off of this. And I was like, come on, you guys, like, it's like, why create this? Because there are transgender people in the world who like you were kind of saying earlier, just want to live their lives and be left alone. I don't want to participate in hurting those people. And I feel like it just hurts people to be like, you're not a part of, you know, you used to be, but now you're not. Um, but it's getting harder and harder. It, it really is. I mean, even for like the people that I consider to be legitimately transgender, because uh, it, 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 they're so lost in this mess at this point. I'm sorry, this you just wanted an answer to your question. No, this is great. Um, I hate the Q. Don't accept the Q. 100%. Uh, let's, let's cut the Q off and get rid of it. 1000%. Um, I guess I'm not there yet with the T. Um, I, I accept the argument that it's a totally different thing. Um, you know, a person's gender identity is not the same thing as their sexual orientation. I accept that. I guess the reason why for me it was never really like a thing that I felt the need to you know, make a clear line of delineation is that I think that most or many gay people have experienced some form of gender dysphoria mm -hmm. in their life. I did. I mean, when I was a little boy and I didn't understand complex human sexuality, for me, the feelings that I was experiencing as a little boy, it was easier to to um, to accept those feelings in terms of gender. So I knew I was a little boy who had crushes on little boys. I knew that I liked th things that little girls liked. I would have much, I would have been much happier playing with the girls than out, you know, roughing it up with the boys and fighting and things like that. I would have rather been inside playing with Barbies. And so I kind of identify with what that feels like to feel like you're a boy who identifies with girls. And then at a certain point I did grow out of it and I probably at puberty and then I realized that I was a gay guy, a gay man. Mm. Um, but, but I guess the point is that I can identify with that feeling enough that I don't feel the need to ostracize people who are like that. I feel like some people don't grow out of that. And for them, a gender transition is the right answer to feel like they are legitimately who they are. And I, I guess I just don't see the need to ostracize those people from the community because I sort of understand, I can it, relate to that feeling. It's, it sounds like if you were a little kid today, you would end up getting the hormone blockers and the surgery yeah, and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Probably. They, they, they put you through it. I mean, if I had had, um, you know, parents and teachers who wanted to um, embrace what I was going through and say, you know, we, we, we feel like, you know, we want to, uh, validate what you're feeling, yeah, things could have gone you know, horribly it's, wrong. It's crazy because it's actually a very, very fundamentalist view of how to deal with the issue of gender dysphoria. That's what they do in Iran. In Iran, if you're a gay man, they they uh, give you a forced sex change operation. Right. That's my understanding. And so what's happening now is really interesting because they're going to little kids who like social things. Hey, look, boys can play with dolls. Girls can play football, right? That's no big deal. Well, not anymore. If you're a little girl who wants to play football, they will tell you you are trans and you need the surgery. That's a really weird thing. Like, can't you just be a woman who plays football? I don't know what's, what's the... Exactly. Well, and that was what I was very poorly articulating a moment ago when I was talking about like the, the identity quotient of being non-binary or gender fluid. I mean, I was a kid of the 80s 
And in the 80s, we had uh, Boy George, you know, we had Billy Idol, we had uh, all those hair bands and all the people wearing makeup. And it was just sort of an expression. That's the word I think I was looking for. It was an expression, not an identity. And everyone accepted that expression. I mean, I'm sure there were some people who didn't, you know, had an issue with Boy George or whatever. But for the most part, people were like, like they didn't really care. Yeah. But now people are like, oh, Boy George, you need to be trans. Yeah. You, know, you, you said this you, before that they were. The, the party that is advocating for, you know, transition people earlier and earlier are the same p- party that's saying, like, don't believe gender stereotypes and give right. your daughters Tonka trucks and whatever else. Yeah. Except if your son reaches for a Barbie, then maybe you should be on alert for perhaps their puberty their blockers. Trans- like, yeah. Maybe your son socially likes to hang out with girls. And who knows why that is? They're t- they're they're young. Like you said, like, I think there's so much rush to say, like, we're going to make these kids change and identify because we're we're trying to protect them. We're trying to help them. And like, I want to believe that's Arnold, but like it has some intense consequences for something that you wouldn't do if in other circumstances, right? But here's where I separate from, from some people on the right on this issue, because I, I, the left has gone way too far, way, way, way too far. And so I do understand that there is a bit of, I would say an overcorrection on the right, but I hear some people on the right say, you know, uh, like no children are transgender and no child is born in the wrong body. And I'm like, well, then where did all these transgender adults come from? <laughs> I mean, we definitely know that there are people in the world who believe that their gender transition was the right choice for them and that they finally feel like who they authentically are after they transition. Those people were children at one point. I'm not saying that you should transition a child, but I'm saying transgender adults were once transgender children. So that it really kind of can't be true. You know that... The, uh, uh, Male grip strength has dropped by what, like 80, 70, 70% since uh, World War II? I think the the embracing of plastics probably resulted in a rapid decline in testosterone and a massive disruption of the human endocrine system, resulting in weak and effeminate and masculine, weak and effeminate males and uh, masculinized females. So I, one of the reasons I think we may be seeing this big burst is the the expansive use of plastics, which we use for all of our food, and then we eat it. Women get pregnant and then eat plastics, which disrupt the endocrine systems of the babies. Mm -hmm. There were some studies that um, we've talked about on the show before, a birth control that women were taking, and then when they got pregnant later, it would masculinize the babies, and they tracked the women who got pregnant and found that like an overwhelming majority of their daughters were lesbians. Looking at a study like that, I'm like, there's probably a correlation between the things we are putting in our bodies that we know are endocrine disruptors and the expansive increase in the LGBTQ community. But you know the problem is? Well, that and predatory teachers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. Too. You know, telling kids things that they shouldn't be teaching them. But I do think endocrine disruptors are playing a huge role. And the problem is when a human being is affected in this way and then they become an adult who can vote, they vote in favor of the way they've been affected. So if there is something that is damaging and poisonous to us, and then people vote to affirm that thing, well, you're going to get more of it. Could you imagine if people were voting to affirm mesothelioma like it was a good thing and exposing kids to asbestos, pulverized asbestos, so that we could explain, you know, so what? what's the big deal? Maybe they'll get mesothelioma too. It's like, look, if there's an environmental factor that's causing harm to people and creating depression and anxiety... We don't want to affirm that. We want to stop it and figure out what's causing it. Right. I think two big components. One, the social component, obviously, we're talking about. But I do think that phthalates, PCBs, et cetera, chemicals in the water and the food are, are causing a lot of it as well. So in that scenario, then, you believe that some that a good portion of these people are actually experiencing oh, yeah. gender dysphoria. Yeah, or we, we, we've had this discussion. That's why it's so funny when these mm-hmm. like these cultists lie about what I believe. And say, like, denying the existence of trans people. And I'm like, I'm the one who's actually argued to many of these uh, activists, like with James Lindsay, for instance, saying, no, I think some kids are trans. I think there are kids who are born to mothers who are taking some kind of medication or had, and, uh, were sensitive to certain phthalates, PCBs, what is it, polychloral biphenols or whatever. And thus, the child in the womb was, their endocrine system got disrupted in utero and in development. And then this kid is born with a more feminized Men, you know, brain and mental state or, or uh, endocrine system and a masculine body, and that's going to create dysphoria, that makes perfect sense. I don't, I don't understand. And, and it's a societal problem. It's, it's, a, it's a poison that we've introduced into our food supply that we need to deal with. I don't understand why it has to be one or the other or absolute, a zero-sum game. 
So there are people like, no, no kid feels this way. It's not possible. And I'm like, I think a lot of little girls are being socially manipulated. Yeah. And it's because of Instagram and other social media platforms that they're feeling this pressure to fit in. So they're saying things they don't understand. Because I've heard so many stories from parents who are like, my daughter said that they were gay or pan or lesbian. And they're like, my nine-year-old doesn't even know what those words meant. Right. But then you're actually going to get, genuinely, in my opinion, more young boys and girls who are legitimately trans and experiencing dysphoria. That doesn't mean the treatment is surgery, sterilization, or puberty blockers. I don't know what the treatment is, but I certainly think there may be a physiological effect. It's not just social. And it may pass for a lot of people. Well, we know that depending on the studies you look at, it's from like 65 to 90 some odd percent that children desist. And once they hit puberty, they stop having these feelings. So if that's the case, shouldn't not, we, we should absolutely lean in that direction. Like, let's not use puberty blockers because most of these kids are going to be totally fine once they may pass puberty. Mm-hmm. Why it's, create more stress and anxiety for them? It's right. a trolley and, problem. You know, in what way? Because if you, if you, the argument that they make on the left is, oh, if we don't have these, get kids to transition, they're going to kill themselves. But if you, if you transition kids that don't need to be transitioned and you do it en masse because of social contagion, you're going to end up transitioning kids that you're going to end up transitioning way more people than you need. And you're going to end up having more people with ruined lives than if you don't transition yeah. the few actual people that are trans that after puberty end up being actually trans. The 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 high probability is that after is most tr- people that feel like they're trans in puberty, once they go through puberty, they they it desists and stops. That's the 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 most likely course of action. That's most likely what, what's going to happen. So if you if you push everybody that has any kind of gender dysphoria into transitioning, you're going to end up hurting a lot more people than you help. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.